welcome to today's webinar. Um, you can see on our screen Katie. So just real quick, so she can take over. Um, you will receive a link from me within 24 to 48 hours that does offer the link to view the recording. Um, Katie will also be with us at the Lean Coaching Summit this year. That will also be in Indiana. And I think that's it for me. Katie, on to you. Okay, thanks so much, Skylar. Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Katie Lebedz. I am the president and CEO of a lean consulting firm called Learning to Lean, and I am based out of Wisconsin. I am a certified Lean Six Sigma Master Black Belt and certified project management professional and emotional intelligence coach. I'm the author of three books on Amazon. You can find How to Improve Absolutely Anything, How to Improve Absolutely Every Process, and our Learning to Lean CI Planner. I have over 20 years experience in lean continuous improvement in Six Sigma. So let's go ahead and get started. Let's talk about time management. Well, time management begins, believe it or not, it begins when we wake up in the morning. It begins just as we wake up. And what does your morning wake up look like? So let's talk about it just for a second. What does that morning routine look like? Do you have the snooze button or like on the screen, do you have multiple alarms that you have set for every five minutes? I actually know some people that are like this. Um, first thing you do in the morning, do you have your alarm go off and get up and start scrolling on social media before you're even out of bed? Do you get out of bed and you jump up with excitement and energy and you're ready for the day? Do you maybe even start your day with some exercise, right? Uh, maybe start with some yoga, or I know some people that actually go to sleep in their workout clothes and get up in the morning and jump right on the treadmill. I have a good friend that she gets up every day at 4 a.m. to get up and be on the treadmill and get herself ready before her twin three-year-old boys get ready in the morning. Good for her. That's not me. So what is your morning standard work? What is your morning standard work? As we all know from being lean practitioners, standard work is the most powerful lean tool in the world. Now, standard work, as you know, is the way we do something every time until we make it better. So yes, we can even have standard work for our morning routine and our time management. This is where we start our baseline for improvement. It documents how we perform our work and it involves a team to help develop pokey oak or workaround. It promotes problem solving, ensures consistency and expedites training and reduces variation and helps to support audits if we're not talking about our own morning routine. Now, I would never come in to you and design a morning routine and hand it to you as you uh, go to bed tonight and say, here's your new process for your morning routine. I think this is best. You have to do it for yourself. Just like we're talking about Kaizen events and who should be involved, the process owner and the people actually doing the process should be involved in standard work. But your time management, again, starts just as you start your day. So how do you manage your time in the morning? Are you scrolling on social media first thing in the morning? I can't say that I'm not guilty of that sometimes. Do you get out of bed and you're grumpy about it or you take a shower in the morning or take a shower at night? Maybe you're a person that you have children and you make all of the lunches the night before. Maybe you're a person that you meal plan for the whole week. Good for you. Whatever works for you. But I'm gonna show you some tools that might help for time management. You may have heard of one, it's called leader standard work. So this is just an example of one that I have and the one that I use. Uh, this helps me to make sure I am consistent on a day-to-day -day basis as I enter and start my work day. Now we can talk about how you fix your morning routine from getting up in the morning to laying out your clothes the night before, to prepping your lunches ahead of time and things like that. But let's move on to talk about how we do this for work. So leader standard work could be 
your day-to-day -day job, could be from home, but I use this for my day-to-day -day work. So it looks at your top three goals for the day and today's top three priorities, which by the way, those two things could be different. I look at today's schedule. So what do I have on today's schedule? And yes, you can do this on your iPad, right? So you can have this on your iPad or you could have that on a piece of paper printed out or in a planner. I look at my schedule, fill out my schedule and I ask those questions. Did I go to the Gemba? Did I practice PDCA? Did I support 5S today? And did I promote a lean culture? Also an area for true north thoughts and for notes. So this is a great example of leader standard work to help get you organized and manage your time. Now here's a few more examples of standard work that you can look at. You can do monthly goals, top three goals for the month and have that documented your daily standard work. So maybe uh, daily or maybe every Friday, you run a report, Friday morning, eight o'clock. I would put that in there, eight o'clock, uh, run financial report and check the box for Friday. So those are just great reminders of things that I have to do on a routine basis. And I can have that posted on my desk or on my computer. What do I have to do on a monthly basis? Um, maybe you have to send out a project report on a monthly basis. I could put that on my monthly standard work. And if you're a lean practitioner, you know that it's great to have forms for 5S and for Waste Walk. So we're just trying to create some standards for you to follow. Now, of course, you can make your own. There's tons of templates everywhere. If this doesn't resonate with you, maybe this will. Uh, I also utilize this, and I've utilized uh, the Mel Robbins five-second uh, five journal for many years, uh, and this is my standard work in the morning. So I get up, uh, I take care of myself in the morning, depending on whether or not I have clients uh, away from my office or uh, I stay at home, I'll look and, look and fill this out. So how am I feeling? Why do I feel that way? What can I do to feel more energized? So that's more personal. And then top project why the project matters to me and what action I can take to move forward. Then other thoughts, gratefulness, and what time I'll stop working. And then the other page is notes. And that's generally where I would write what things I have to accomplish today. And of course you can put the time in there, which is kind of mirroring that leader standard work already. The other thing that I use is, yes, I still use a paper calendar. Um, I use an Outlook calendar, pardon me, Gmail calendar, um, but I do have, uh, to the left of me here, I do have this paper calendar. Uh, there is all, as you know, the psychological benefits of writing something down on pen and paper. This also allows me to look at things that I know need to be due. So things that are color coded uh, on my calendar. I'm the type of person that loves color. That works really well for me. That helps to keep me uh, grounded, helps me to be able to look real quick and know what is what. Um, I also like to highlight uh, days of the month there that I've had a particularly great day, something good happened. So I can flip back through there and see what went well during the month. So all of that goes hand in hand. So your leader standard work and goes hand in hand with visual management. And as practitioners, we know what visual management is, right? It's a set of techniques that make operation standards visible so that team members can e more easily follow them. We're familiar with visual management. Uh, if we see, or if I see another shadow board, right? Everybody just thinks it's about shadow boards and it's not. Uh, sure, that's a great tool if that works for you, your situation, your team members, and your culture. We use visual management all the time if we look at KPIs. Of course, we're all familiar with that computer message. That's visual management too. Um, we're familiar with the unfortunate mask message and, uh, of course, uh, speed limit, right? And uh, mine would be a little bit higher than 27 probably. What does visual management look like? For me personally, right, uh, visual management, again, this goes back to time. I don't want to waste time while I'm in the shower trying to read font size three on a shampoo or conditioner bottle. I can't read it, right? So I put in Purology is the brand that I use. And unfortunately, they make the shampoo and conditioner bottles the exact same. 
So I use the Sharpie, C for conditioner, S for shampoo. Again, saves me time. I'm not wasting time by looking. We think about our eight wastes. This is visual management in a medical situation, right? This saves people time. They are not looking at just the numbers. Can you imagine if that was just black and white and it didn't have any colors associated with it and just numbers? You'd have to sit there and look at it and try to decipher it. And we're familiar with other visual management things that are around us. But how can visual management be used to better manage our time? So I want to talk about a few things. And we did get some questions. Uh, so this hopefully will address one of the questions that came in before. So I want you to take a look at this. Let's talk about all the emails in all the meetings, right? All the emails and all the meetings. Uh, let's be honest. Some, day we, some days we are in meetings back to back to back where we don't even have a chance to run to the restroom or to have lunch. And you're probably thinking, what, what is lunch? I haven't seen that in a long time. Let me show you a tactic that I successfully implemented with a company and it has worked very, very well. So first let's talk about email subject lines. So this again, this is a cultural aspect as many, many things are. Uh, but once, believe it or not, once you start using this, people uh, catch on to it and they really like it too. It's not just for you. So this is what I use for email subject lines. So I send out a note to Joe. My subject line will say inform. And that means that this is just an FYI, Joe. You don't have to jump on it right now, but I feel like this information is important to you. Then I use the word action. So if I need Joe to do something for me or for somebody else, my email will say action. There is information in that email that requires you, the person that is receiving it, to do something. So as an example, I'm teaching a green belt class next week. So I sent Joe a note and I said, action, green belt materials. And I asked Joe if he could please pick up those green belt materials for me and bring them to class on Monday because I needed Joe to do something for me. The last one I used is called Escalate. Now, Escalate is when somebody needs help, right? So when the, you know, cockapooty duty hits the fan, we need you to read that email and take action immediately. I can tell you in my career, I've only used Escalate maybe twice, uh, where something was going to go very, very wrong and I needed help from my boss immediately. Our entire department uh, of 200 people utilized these email subject lines, and that was helpful, right? It was very helpful to be able to do that. I will try to, for some of this inform, you're going to have to, in, in my world, if some was, some was in form and others it was action, uh, I would personally, I know this sounds redundant, I'd send two emails. Um, so you could send two emails. You could utilize the two in the CC also. Uh, if somebody receives it in the two subject, you could say that that means that you need to do something about it. If it was CC, it was just in form. Um, you could take it one way or the other. Let me, I'm, I'm trying to manage both at the same time for you guys. So uh, meetings. So we get a lot of questions about meetings. What do we do? So if I'm sending, again, I used a template that I created in Outlook at the time. And anybody that was in the two area that was invited uh, was required to attend. So you may be thinking, I work in a community where everybody gets invited to every meeting. That's a cultural change that you need to talk about. Um, it is something that if you're going to implement something like this, this is a larger discussion to be able to say, please only invite the people. If they're in the two, they are required for that meeting. And we're going to talk about uh, required here in just a second. Uh, if they are required to attend that meeting, and let's say I can't come, then you are also required to send somebody in your place. If they were on the CC or the area or they were on the optional area, that means it's optional. Um, so sometimes we have cultures and I have customers like that where everybody gets invited to every meeting. And 
some people also believe, okay, they don't invite everybody to every meeting, but they do put a lot of people on CC. And some people believe if they get any invitation, regardless of where they are on the tour CC, that they have to go. And that is something that you have to discuss with folks. Um, if you are in the two, we need you there. If you are on CC or optional, that it's just more of a heads up and an FYI that this meeting is happening. And um, it is not, your presence is not required. Now, how did we manage that? We actually created two meeting types. Um, so a meeting type one, and we created this as a template in Outlook. We need you here. We need you paying attention, let's be honest, and no multitasking. Okay, that was a meeting type one. And when you are in Outlook and you select that you create a new meeting, there was this template that appeared in the body of the meeting invitation that said uh, it was a checkbox. Is it a type one meeting or is it a type two meeting? Type two meeting means we need you here for a certain portion, but after that you can multitask. Okay, so we had large, large meetings where people were reporting on statuses of things, and that would be a type two meeting where they came in, they did their portion, and then they were able to multitask quietly after that. So this helps. This helps to manage your time because you are not looking at just the sea of emails. You can filter through those emails and you can make sure that you are going to meetings that you're really required to. You are uh, declining meetings that you may be on the CC to. Let's talk a little bit more about technology and Outlook. I'm going to go through these fairly quickly. Outlook categories. If you're not using them, look it up. Use Outlook categories to keep your email and calendar visually organized. You want to be able to save time as you go through your emails. Which ones do I need to look at? Use Outlook rules to automatically sort and prioritize your emails. Be careful with that. You can lose emails if you do it wrong. Um, so I had a boss rule. I called it a boss rule. And uh, I had from my boss and it was labeled with the category boss and in green. So it looked like this and it brought all of her emails to the top of my email list. Uh, I also color code my calendar. For me, that's huge. Color coding my calendar is huge. I am trying to manage uh, a personal schedule and a professional schedule and uh, a wide variety of things. So I color code my entire calendar. Uh, and as you can see, there's some that are green, there are some that are orange. And you can use Outlook flags to remind you to complete something if you're like, gosh, I know I'll get back to it, and you lose it in that sea of emails. Use the flag feature to remind you to complete something by a certain due date. And you can use Outlook retention labels to auto-delete emails based on your preference. Again, be careful with that. I uh, use Outlook folders to organize your emails. I'm sure you all know this, but don't use the deleted items folder as a place to organize your emails. And I know that may sound silly, but there's 71 participants on the call now, and I bet you at least one person is doing that. Don't do that because some companies will uh, start delete, automatically deleting things in the deleted folder and you're going to be in trouble and automatically empty your deleted items folder when signing out of Outlook, that's what I do. That keeps things organized. And I used Outlook customizations to only see the buttons that I need on a regular basis. Again, managing your time. Don't have stuff that you are not going to be using or seeing. The other one is time blocking. So you may think, time blocking, what should I do with that? Are you time blocking your lunch or are people just scheduling right over it? That's not okay. You need a break. You need to have that mental break, whether it's 30 minutes. I was telling somebody yesterday, 30 minutes, I would sometimes go out to the car and take a nap and just set the alarm on my phone because I needed that mental break during the day. I need time for my schedule. I have to block time because sometimes I have to travel. Right? You can see I've got personal and professional, my poor husband, colonoscopy, right? Personal and professional, I have to block it off. If I don't use time blocks, and time blocks could also be time blocks for working specifically on a project. If you don't make the time, you're not going to have the time to be able to work on things. 
especially if you don't block your calendar and you're one of those people that are in hundreds of meetings a week. The other thing I want to talk to you about is the Kanban board. Um, this I've used personally. Um, you don't have to buy software. You, you can do this on your own with post-it notes. Um, as we know from a lean practitioner point of view, Kanban means signal. So it's just like the bad signal, right? It can be applied in manufacturing and in the office and in your personal life. So uh, when you go to a hotel and you see the refrigerator and it has all those things in the refrigerator, that's a Kanban system because it knows as soon as you uh, took the bottle of Coke out of there to apply it to your bill and lets the staff know they need to refill it next time they come to clean your room. We know Kanban from either the and on light or those Kanban cards that's used in manufacturing. And on light means, hey, I need something. Kanban card means, hey, I need this something and refill this. But what does it look like when we're in the office um, or on manufacturing? Either way, if you Google it, you're going to get the top left picture. Uh, but there are ways that we can apply it in the office. We use a Kanban board to keep track of projects, project status, workload, development stages, et cetera. You can certainly start, and I would suggest starting with post-it notes and a whiteboard or a big piece of paper. How do you want to organize your projects? How do you want to organize your day? I had somebody that came to me and said, I'm going to lose my job because I do not complete my patient information in the system after I'm done with them. And I said, okay, we're gonna create two columns just on the wall, post-it notes, list out all the patients that you have today. And as you complete their paperwork in the system, move that post-it note from that one column of patients today to the done column. And I said, I know it seems redundant, but something in your head clicks when you actually have to start moving these cards, the Kanban cards, from one section to the next. Um, the one on the left you can actually buy for your kids. That's a Kanban board, believe it or not. Uh, they have different things like get up on, on time, get dressed, etc. They get a little star. That's a Kanban board. It's just a kid version. And let me show you um, some technology. Now, all of these tools have some sort of free version for a little while or free version with limited capabilities. Um, I don't support, or I, I should say, I don't have a preference. Um, all of them are great. So there's Airtable, there's Monday.com, Smartsheet, and Miro. Uh, personally, I have a Miro um, subscription. So what does it look like? Uh, Monday.com, that's the Kanban view. Uh, I use this personally uh, to manage my projects and the things that I'm working on. Uh, my team, when I had a project management team, we managed all of our projects globally for an entire IT department using a Kanban board. So if you think of the traditional project management, uh, initiating, planning, executing, deploying, and closing, then you could you have those as columns in your Kanban board and move your projects from one status to another. And we man that's how we manage our projects globally. Um, and I manage workload like that. Uh, this is Airtable. Uh, Airtable, it's a view that is a Kanban board. And this is another version in Smartsheet. We can use all the lean tools to help us with time management, right? 5S, visual management, PDCA, standard work, Kanban. However, we all have a personal threshold. So a personal threshold before our mind erupts, right? And what does that mean? That means we can talk about 5S and say time management should be doing 5S all the time. But my version of 5S for my house or my computer desktop may look different than your version. And guess what? That's okay because my threshold for organization or disorganization, depending on your opinion, might be different from yours. And that's completely all right. We can't fit everybody into a box. So make sure that you have some understanding. Make sure that you understand that this is also a cultural change. 
So whether it's with you or it's with your entire organization, this is a cultural change too. And that takes time. In today's session, quick session, by the way, we discuss three lean tools for time management, standard work, visual management, and Kanban. I know there's some questions. I'll get to that in one second. Um, if you are interested in those standard work templates that I showed you on like the second or third slide, leader standard work, monthly goals, daily goals, et cetera, I have put them for free on my website. So you can go to the QR code up here and download those for free. Uh, I won't spam you. Don't worry about it. Just download them for free. They are for sale on my website, but because you took this class, you can download them for free. If you want to go to my website, this QR code with the little dinosaur is there. Uh, I have and provide uh, continuous improvement, lean, Six Sigma project management, emotional intelligence, coaching, training, and Kaizen events. Okay, uh, let's see, chat. We're piloting Silent Fridays. Yes, I did that too. Thanks for the reminder. The day's blocked off is busy, so meetings are not scheduled. The team is loving having time to do the doing. Yes, I did that also uh, when I worked for an organization. It was called No Meeting Fridays. It was actually Friday afternoon after, after lunch. Um, so that allowed for time for innovation. We had an innovation room where they could go down and play with different toys and games and very hands-on for our kinesthetic learners, where you could work on projects, you could get yourself reorganized, you could do your project status for the week, but it was no meeting Friday afternoons. Now, if there was a customer meeting, of course, we wouldn't tell them, no, we're not having a meeting because it's Friday afternoon. Of course, we met their demands. Uh, but yes, Stacy, absolutely. Uh, it, I can attest to you that it definitely works. It takes a little bit of time for, uh, it's not your group that you have to worry about. It takes a little time for other people to get used to that. Uh, but it, it is fantastic. It is, yes, absolutely a fantastic idea. Um, I addressed the other one from Kristen. Do you have any other questions or comments for me? I tried to make sure that I had a little bit of time at the end. So we had so many people registered for this session. I hope that you found value in today's session. I hope that uh, you have a little bit more insight into time management. And just because your time management looks different than mine, doesn't mean it's bad or it's wrong. It's available to you to make it whatever you want to be. We talked about using that inform, action, escalate, the meeting types. We talked about things you can do in Outlook. We talked about standard work. What does standard work look like for you? Leader standard work. We also talked about those wonderful tool that Kanban board. Those aren't hard to set up. If you're new to it, start with post-it notes, right? We, as lean practitioners, we all have these sitting around. There's in my purse, they're in my bag, they're everywhere in our house. Uh, use those tools. And of course, if you have questions, be, please feel free to reach out. I strongly encourage you also to consider coming to one of the Lean Frontiers conferences. As Skylar mentioned, I'll be speaking at the conference in July in Indiana, so I'm excited about that. But there are a wide variety of conferences that are available. That's the Lean Coaching Conference. Um, there's Kata Conference and things like that also available on the Lean Frontiers website. So please make sure you go and visit the website and we have some more chats. Oh, Post-it Note Queen, yes! <laughs> Thank, thank you, you so thank much. Thank you so much for your presentation today. Um, we do still have a couple of minutes, but it looks like everybody is thanking you. Oh, we did get a question about your slides. If we can get your slides for today's presentation. Uh, yes, I will uh, get those over to you, Skylar. I assume that you would post it. Is that which, what you normally do? Yes, I right. will. Once I get those from Katie, everybody, you will receive an email from me with also the recording and her presentation. So I will send that as a big email. Yes, I'll I'll send it as PDF. Uh, okay, as perfect. You, I use a lot of images, so the file is quite large. So, but thank you so much for the opportunity, Lean Frontiers. I greatly appreciate it. Thank you all for coming. Uh, it was fantastic to be able to be here today, and I wish you a fantastic afternoon.
Thank you so much, Katie. And thank you to thank everyone you. who participated. We will see you very soon. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.